Welcome back aboard USS Cod. I'm Cod President Paul Ferrace, sitting here in the control room. And uh, today we, we've got a, a, a mission for our visitors and, and our viewers here. We need your help. Uh, you know, we know quite a bit about this uh, 1943 Gato class boat, but we don't know everything. And some things kind of escape uh, notice in the blueprints. Uh, so we've got two mystery items that we're going to talk about today. Um, and um, we're going to hope that somebody out there might be able to shed some light. Um, so in a moment, I'm going to go back here in the control room behind the periscope wells, and we're going to look at two mysterious containers, rather heavily built. Come on and join me. As promised, we've arrived at the back end of the periscope shears. In fact, uh, this vertical cylinder back here is the attack scope uh, periscope well. And we've got some uh, uh, switch junctions uh, for the the bridge selector 7MC, 7MC, so these are the battle communication boxes. But that's not what we're talking about. Let me direct your attention down here to these two rather heavily built canisters. Um, and I just noticed something about them. We'll talk about that in a moment. Uh, but these have, of course, always been here as far as our knowledge of the boat. Uh, they are both identical and they have rather large screw-on caps, but uh, obviously a hasp that allows them to be locked. So let me open one up so Evan can get in here. Righty tighty, lefty loosey. Now we just put this up on our Facebook page um, asking for help and I... it hasn't been uh, overwhelming but I think uh, our friend... here let's get right down in there. I noticed some more features. Of course we I'm going to guide your thing. Can you see? There's a little tab about two-thirds of the way down uh, that might be some kind of a bracket. Well, there's two brackets. And you know what? That might actually uh, help us identify. So this is obviously a very heavily built uh, uh, cap. Uh, that looks like it's rather heavily built from uh, piping. It's got a, a bottom, but it also has vents cut into the side. Come on back around and, and show the two uh, horizontal vents down here. Can you see my finger? I'm touching the vents. These are cut into the bottom and that tells me perhaps, are you, are you seeing vents on your side? Because the vents are back here on the back side. Um, we don't know what these are. Um, but we had a suspicion that because they're so heavily built and lockable they might have held some type of an explosive device. Now, why down here, inches off the deck? And of course, we're dropping a lot of uh, paint flakes and fragments on our newly installed rubber deck. Um, what do you want to put in here that goes boom? Well, if Evan can turn the uh, camera around here and get some close-ups, this is the IFF stack the identification friend or foe. This is part of the equipment. So these are our TN, APR1, radar uh, 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 analyzers. Back up behind me, sadly, are the brackets empty uh, that held uh, some of the more beefy secret stuff uh, from our identification friend or foe. Now, uh, Rich Bacalny of the USS Pampanito is kind of the go-to guy for uh, that kind of stuff. Uh, they and a few of our sister boats are lucky to have a complete or almost complete uh, IFF outfitting. Uh, we don't because when Cod was brought to Cleveland in 1959, uh, that stuff was still very, very secret. Uh, or at least rather classified, so that was removed. Uh, but anyway, um, 
those devices you do not want to fall into enemy hands so according to what Rich McKelney tells me they had a self-destruct uh, uh, system built into them and by self-destruct I mean there was a uh, horizontal uh, cylinder that would be screwed into the front uh, equipment face and uh, it was similar to what was used aboard aircraft to keep similar aircraft electronics from falling into enemy hands um, the aircraft versions had a um, a trigger that if you smashed into or crashed into something uh, the uh, force would would trigger the self-destruct uh, 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 systems so that these uh, sensitive and secret electronics wouldn't fall into enemy hands even if the crew were dead uh, but you don't really have that problem on a submarine um, but you do want to be able to uh, destroy your IFF gear and uh, we have a dedicated switch we'll uh, do a cutaway to show you uh, that would uh, uh, set off uh, a system to destroy the uh, IFF uh, equipment but the boom stuff you don't necessarily want to have that uh, sitting perhaps in the equipment uh, while it's uh, in port or let's say you're in mothball storage uh, you don't necessarily want that stuff ready to go boom uh, so these to my guesstimation uh, are the two self-destruct uh, charges and uh, thanks to Rich McKelney we have a schematic uh, uh, an image of what they look like and my guess is they would fit in here rather nicely uh, they could be screwed down and locked uh, and then of course if you went out on a war patrol you could arm your IFF uh, self-destruct system by opening these up removing the explosives and installing them in the black boxes uh, that's my guesstimation but uh, hopefully I'm out in the uh, uh, YouTube uh, world we've got some people uh, I'm hoping and praying that may have actually used these things and and could shed some light uh, did we guess right uh, is Rich McKelney still the man of the hour with uh, the skinny on all the classified uh, systems if not chime in and let us know so this is one of two things we're going to talk about today uh, this is you know, I think the badass, wicked, cool, explosive thing. Uh, the next is uh, a real head scratcher, but not quite as boom, uh, alicious, and 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 dangerous. Let's go topside. Here we are up in the forward superstructure. Uh, right here is the uh, staircase uh, down uh, to the escape trunk side door. Of course, original equipment uh, by the Navy. And right behind, under the stairs, is the second mystery, uh, the mystery cable reel. I, I shouldn't uh, bias it by saying cable reel. It's a reel for something, but um, perhaps not likely a cable. Uh, our, uh, our crewman, Daryl Flint, who uh, knows pretty much uh, as much about the boat as anybody, uh, you know said I don't think it's for cable because it's too lightweight and cable doesn't uh, coil very easily now we just recently had this thing restored to uh, uh, working condition by John Luke and some of our other uh, crewmen thank you John and and the others uh, it had been frozen in place uh, from decades of, of lack of maintenance uh, so we took it apart painted it uh, put new grease uh, bearings and greased those bearings and now it it moves rather nicely okay so uh, years ago and I mean years I mean I mean 40 or more years ago um, I was told offhand by some uh, World War II sub vets that were our ship keepers that this was the fire hose reel uh, for a length of fire hose uh, that would provide the sub with a firefighting capacity um, not necessarily inside the boat but uh, let's say we're in a nest of, of subs and a neighboring sub has a fire casualty and uh, I was told that this would allow you to connect 
a fire hose to a water supply, uh, seawater, not not the ship's fresh water, and uh, would give you some firefighting uh, capability. Now, that uh, uh, is my gut feeling as to what this probably is. However, um, we did uh, uh, want to get confirmation from that, and uh, we uh, turned that uh, over to our Facebook viewers, and we got a lot of good uh, suggestions that were, you know, pretty far off the mark, actually. Uh, a lot of uh, submarine veterans uh, said, well, that's got to be the, uh, the, ro uh, the rescue float um, cable reel. But no, 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 we'll get a, uh, an insert uh, here in a minute. Um, our rescue float is about 20 feet forward on the other side of the superstructure, and it has all of its uh, cable nicely uh, uh, wound and ready to go so that wasn't for this especially under the the stairs here uh, then some other ones thought it was um, the rescue float for the uh, individual personal free ascent uh, if you had to escape uh, a sunken sub uh, you would pass up a, uh, a yellow and red uh, rescue float that was attached to the boat by a, um, a rope and it had uh, knots uh, every so often that would have you stop and, and exhale on your way up wearing the Momsen lung. Uh, that is a separate uh, future program. Uh, but no, that reel of, uh, of line is just inside our escape trunk uh, with line on it, so we know where that was. And believe me, this can hold probably a mile or two of line, so that's too much. Um, Anybody out there have any clue as to what that was built to hold? Now, um, again, we're looking for evidence. And, um, of course, for it to be a fire hose means you have to have uh, a connection uh, for a water supply. Now, perhaps there's something in the escape trunk uh, perhaps part of the uh, flood system that would allow you to flood the uh, escape trunk uh, in service from outside seawater to make an escape. Or is that the remnant of a water supply? Now Evan's going to back up and, and, and shoot a picture of that little pigtail stump there. To me, that looks like it might be the uh, capped end of uh, a water supply valve, uh, again, uh, not fresh water from the ship's fresh water system, but perhaps something from the trim and drain system that you could uh, uh, pressurize with ship's air or maybe the, the trim and drain pump. Uh, I'm not qualified in submarines, but some of you are, so I'm throwing it into your lap. Let me know what you think. So. Um, my gut feeling is to go with what I was told 45 years ago that this is uh, a fire hose reel, a canvas fire hose. Now in uh, the comments that we got from Rich Bacalny, uh, again he uh, was is always helpful, uh, he mentioned that he didn't think perhaps uh, it, it would be fire hose because what if it held air? And of course my response is yeah so what if it held air? I mean uh, fire hose isn't going to hold all that much air and as you go deeper uh, the canvas walls of the fire hose are going to get compressed by sea pressure it's it's not like it's going to cause a problem um, and of course the fire hose would be wrapped around and probably covered with a canvas wrap as I have seen uh, in other installations on surface ships uh, so as to be somewhat uh, protected from uh, UV um, now, would there have been a hose or a nozzle uh, attached? Again, a, a good question. There are some mystery clips on the bulkhead uh, just to uh, uh, Evan's left um, that might have been where you would put the, uh, the, uh, the nozzle. So, you know, that's the interesting thing about our, our job on the sub. Uh, you know, uh, now that we're 80 years uh, after the war and the uh, surviving smoke boat sailors are now uh, pushing 80 or better themselves. Um, a lot of that institutional knowledge is going away, and especially small things like this, uh, you know, uh, the sharp edge knowledge will uh, 
dull and soften over time. So if you have any ideas, uh, please don't tell me it's the uh, rescue float cable or the rescue float rope. No, 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 no. We know it certainly isn't that. Uh, but if you have any other ideas, uh, another thought was uh, that I had is that perhaps it was cable for our uh, Davit, uh, the torpedo and mine recovery Davit. Uh, we'll show you uh, that equipment in a minute. Uh, but because it is right over here, but why would you have that here? And again, Daryl told me that you know you're not likely winding cable. Mm, and this does look like a rather uh, large diameter for a, a cable, so that's a, a possibility. But again, I, I'm, I lean toward the um, the fire hose. Um, so again, comment in this in the uh, uh, comment section, and remember to hit the like, subscribe, and notification bell. And uh, if we have any other great mysteries, we're coming right back to you for help. Thanks for joining us.